and welcome to Caribbean Connections, Caribbean Airlines Thought Leadership Series, where we sit and chat with leaders from across the region to get the inside scoop of how they have achieved success and to provide a platform so they can share their perspective on issues impacting the Caribbean and the world. I am Dion Legault, the Head of Corporate Communications at Caribbean Airlines, and I am delighted to host this series of conversations. In part two of our conversation with the first female CEO of the Nassau Paradise Island Promotion Board, Joy Jabulu, she shares her thoughts on tourism in the Caribbean. Please join us as we continue this wonderful discussion. Welcome back, Joy, to our conversation here. You know, we've had the benefit of your expertise and insight into your career, your very successful career thus far. But now we'd like to zoom in a bit and have a look at tourism, this industry that you know so well. And as we know, tourism in the Bahamas has made a significant rebound since the pandemic restrictions were relaxed. I believe it's about 3 million odd tourists uh, the Bahamas had by mid-August of 2022. But if we take this in the context of the Caribbean, what do you think would be the next steps that the region as a whole can take to capitalize on this current travel boom? And thank you once again. It's such a pleasure to be a part of this um, series and to have this level of conversation with you. Um, you know, as I look at how the Caribbean fared during the pandemic, for the most part, we did very well. We did well because the perception globally was that our COVID numbers were relatively low. If you look at our number one source market for most of us, the United States of America, the proximity, we were close enough for an international travel and we offered what so many people were looking for during the pandemic. They wanted a warm weather um, getaway. They wanted to go on a beach that were where they could self isolate, you know, social distance and we could offer that in abundance. And so um, as we uh, look at ourselves post pandemic, how do we continue to capitalize on this boom that we saw? The great news is that the Caribbean, well, the Americas, but led by the Caribbean, we're rebounding stronger than any other region. And I think that speaks to the collaboration that we as a region um, undertook really during the pandemic. Um, people looked at us with our entry protocols and um, COVID requirements. And at the beginning, they thought they were rather stringent. And then you saw the rest of the world understanding what it was that we were doing. We were trying to protect our people and our visitors and it paid dividends. But now that we've relaxed those um, requirements, people are coming. And so what do we need to continue to do? First of all, there's pent up demand. Everyone's talked about it. People just want to get away. And research is telling us something very, very interesting. As we see the cost of living ri um, rising around the world, as we see people having to make cutbacks, etc., people are choosing to cut back on every other area of their life almost except travel. That's the one luxury that they say they will continue to hold on to. And so we look into 2023 and the beginning of 2024 and our numbers continue to look good. Canada has just opened up. So Canada is a year behind the curve in terms of relaxing their own um, COVID protocols. And that pent up demand in Canadians, we're going to see a great uptick in numbers from that. So we see this great trend straight through to 2023. But having said that as a region, we still have work to do. We are the most tourism dependent region in the world. Out of the top 10 countries that earn the most um, from tourism in terms of contribution to their GDP, five are in this region. 
And so we have to continuously be on our game. We have to continuously work on our product and product refresh or product improvement. In fact, in every interview I've done um, since we've opened up, every journalist has asked, well, what's new? What's new in the Bahamas? What's new in the region? And they don't necessarily mean just new um, hotel buildings. What's new in terms of things to do, for people to do? What's new for us to experience? We, we've come, we loved it, we want to come again. And that's up to us as people of the Caribbean. What are we doing to keep inventing ourselves, refreshing ourselves, making ourselves exciting? You know, um, research has shown us that people are prepared to pay to travel, but they're prepared to pay when they know they're going to get value for service. And so it's incumbent upon us. We, the Caribbean is not a cheap destination to visit. We know that. And it doesn't matter which island you go to. But this is a place that people desire to. There's something about it that everyone, they all want to visit the Caribbean. You're from the Caribbean. Wow. There's that wow factor. And so value for money, it means that that repeat visitor, which is so critical to our sustainability, is key. And for me, one of the biggest things that we can do to capitalize on this boom, airlift. We could have the best product in the world, the most beautiful islands, but if people can't get here internationally, if the ability to get here is hard, that makes it all for naught. So we have got to do everything that we can to ensure that we're getting the airlift from all of our key source markets and feeder markets to our destinations to bring those visitors. And I'm going to raise it. It would be wrong of me not to. Everybody has been asking for years intra-Caribbean island travel. You know, if I'm traveling far, no one wants to come just to the Bahamas and say I've been to the Bahamas. That's wonderful. Could you imagine if they can come to the Bahamas and then hop over? Well, it's not a hop, but go over to St. Lucia, go to St. Vincent, go to um, the Grenadines. Obviously, Jamaica might be another major hub or Barbados and then go to another smaller island because our islands are so different or getting Caribbean Airlines, ensuring that you have those interline agreements with all of the legacy carriers to the point where that inter, um, intra-island travel is as seamless as possible. I think that would be a game changer. And this is something that's been talked way before me, and I'm sure for you, and I'm really ready for it moving from just being talk to being a reality. You know, so those are just a few um, things that come top of mind that I could speak about that would help us ensure that we continue to capitalize on the boom that we're seeing now in travel to the region. And to take a spin off of our own name, Caribbean Connections, and to ensure that we have that connectivity in the region. So the yeah. ease of movement that we have, as you say, it has been a discussion for many, many years, but we must move it past the point of discussion to bring it into reality. So, because out in our source markets and in Europe being one of them, they look at the region as one area. And once we can facilitate that ease of movement, the traction to the region, I have no doubt it will increase because we have something here that many people are desirous of having. That said, what do you think is the most urgent issue facing Caribbean tourism today? And what should countries be looking at as the next thing? I may have mentioned earlier, but it's worth repeating. The Caribbean is the most tourism dependent region in the world. All of our countries, um, we rely on tourism, but we also benefit from tourism. Tourism has brought a standard of living to our region that many, many countries in the world look to and aspire to. However, I think the pandemic um, 
it brought something to the forefront. I don't know if this was replicated throughout the region, but certainly in the Bahamas, there was a lot of discussion amongst people saying that this heavy reliance on um, tourism, that that is the wrong model completely because the world shut down. So if the world shuts down, tourism shuts down. So we know that tourism is um, really susceptible to any shock, any um, extreme event almost and i'm talking about whether it's extreme weather event hurricanes we know the impact that that has obviously the pandemic obviously a recession all of these have an impact on us and people now they are saying is this really the industry that we should be in that we should be putting all our stock in well, I have two responses to that. And it was something that I tried to talk about constantly throughout the pandemic. The first, the world is rushing towards tourism. I mean, if we look at the Middle East, we look at Saudi Arabia and we see the investments that they're making in tourism. They have oil and they're rushing towards tourism. That should tell us something. And it's not just them, around the world. And the reason for that, tourism, Yes, it may be susceptible to um, extreme, to shocks, but it is also the most resilient industry in the world. It is the first to recover. It's the first to employ people in the event of any um, major shock that has occurred. Look at the um, COVID. We're just out of a pandemic. And yet tourism has rebounded in a way that nobody foresaw. And it continues to rebound. People are back to work. In fact, there's such a shortage of people coming back to work across every um, touch point of tourism, whether it's from an airplane to find the pilots, to get the planes, the crew, um, whether it's the staff or the hotels, we can't feed this industry fast enough. And so that in itself, I think is just so important to keep top of mind how quick it is to rebound and how important it is to us. Um, another issue that um, I see facing us and that we need to address, we are one region. You made a very, very um, strong point. When you said the rest of the world, they look at us as one, one Caribbean. In fact, constantly after every hurricane, at my work with the Caribbean Tourism Organization, I remember trying to educate the world, the distance between the Bahamas and Barbados. And while they may be two Bs and Bermuda another one, I could go from Miami to New York faster almost than I could get to any of the other Bs in the region. Um, trying even to let them know between Jamaica in St. Lucia, and so a weather event that happens in one island may have no impact at all. So, the, but the world sees this as one, and particularly if you go to Europe and further afield. And so there is opportunity there for us all to continue to work collaboratively, to spread the message, to educate, but to work collaboratively too. And I had the great fortune of working with some wonderful directors of tourism in the region. And it was amazing how much we shared on the road together. Yes, we talked about our individual product, but we were proud to talk about the fact that we are Caribbean, not I am Caribbean, but we are Caribbean. And it would be um, remiss of me too to state, if I did not state, we have to remain competitive. We can't outprice ourselves. Yes, the cost of doing business in this region is high, but we've got to be mindful. So every cost point, you know, and there's some sensitivities with that, cost of labor, um, cost of importation, importation duties, etc. But we've got to be competitive because we are competing globally. It's not just that um, someone who wants, and yes, our North American traveler from the East Coast may look at this region quite differently, but the rest of the world, they're saying, okay, do I want to go to the Caribbean or do I want to go to the Indian Ocean or do I want to go um, to the Far East? 
And if they start seeing that it's less expensive to visit those places. So whatever we can do, these are issues that collectively, I think we can all look at working collaboratively, working at the highest level to ensure that policies are put in place so that wherever possible, we do everything that we can to ensure that this incredible industry that benefits all of us, that we continue um, to derive the benefit and not just for me, for you, but for future generations to come. Yes, in terms of the region, the next generation, it's very important that we leave a substantive legacy for them so that they too understand the uniqueness and the authenticity of what we offer in this part of the world. In closing, is there anything else you would like to add before we set out? Um, it is always a pleasure to be able to speak, first of all, about the Bahamas. It is my um, home country, I love it. But I have also discovered the Caribbean, the islands of the Caribbean have discovered their uniqueness, their differences, but also that we are one people. And the Jamaican motto comes to mind out of many one people, and I think that's who we are. There is a sense of identity. Wherever we go in the world, we find each other and we know, we know who we are. And so um, with that, always in my mind, whatever I can do personally, professionally to elevate Brand Caribbean. It's an honor, it's a privilege, it's an honor and privilege to work with the professionals who are true, true professionals in this region, to learn from them, to get advice from them, and to be considered a colleague amongst them. So I thank you for this opportunity. Um, I look forward, I've always enjoyed my experience of traveling on Caribbean um, airlines. I look forward to enjoying street food now on, um, you know, on my flights. And it has been an absolute privilege and honor and my pleasure. Thank you, Joy. It has been a pleasure to have you on this yet another episode of Caribbean Connections. Thank you to our viewing audience. We'd love to get your feedback, so please send it to corpcom at caribbean-airlines.com. That email address, corpcom at caribbean-airlines.com. You may follow our social media channels, LinkedIn, TikTok, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at iFly Caribbean. I am Dion Ligo, and this has been Caribbean Connections.